What's going on creators? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another video. Today I want to go over the navigation of the Elgato Stream Deck software. Now I've made videos in the past about Elgato software before and you can take a look at that playlist in the video description below but now it's about two three years old of content. It's still pretty relevant. They haven't really changed too much but I'm going to recap on some of those things and I'm also going to be adding some new stuff to this playlist here but for this one it's just going to be going over the navigation and it's going to be catered to the beginners of the software and even people who are kind of on the fence if they want to purchase this software considering there's other alternatives out there than you know spending the money for the Elgato Stream Deck but for this you can still do quite a bit of stuff even without having the actual device attached to your computer and that's why I wanted to do this on a completely different computer that does not have the actual device attached to it. So that is why you don't see any profiles or anything there. Like there's nothing inside of any of these tiles. And I got rid of the one that says welcome in the center. So it's a complete clean slate. And that's what I wanted to start with because that's what you're going to be seeing as well. So let's go ahead and start jumping into today's video. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the actual... Uh, profiles and everything up here on the top left. So for your stream deck, if you click on that down arrow, it's going to show like devices and the different devices that are attached. So we've got stream deck here. Then you have your mobile devices. If you add your mobile device and you click on that, it's going to want you to download the Steam Deck mobile application on either your Apple or your Android device. You're going to scan the QR code with your mobile device and it will take you to the download. If you don't find it through the app store, you just scan that guy over there you want to make sure that your device is on the same network as your computer that way you can pull that information from your computer and then you're going to want to follow the steps on the actual application itself scan the qr code to pair your mobile device and your computer i'm not going to be covering that in this video but those are the steps as it's laid out here on the screen for you but i can show you that maybe in another video if you're interested but let me know in the comments below so we're going to go ahead and just hit cancel for that and then you got your default profile. So for profiles, this is really nice because you can have it set up for different people who might be using the same stream deck on one computer, or maybe you have different types of profiles depending on what you're using your stream deck for, because you can use your stream deck for a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be for streaming. You can use it for editing. You can use it for Photoshop or Illustrator or other different type of applications that you want to try to utilize because there's a lot of things that you can add like hotkeys and stuff like that and multifunction tools than you know just your basic one button go live switch scene type stuff so there's a lot of things you could do with a stream deck outside of just streaming so if you have profiles if you just want to keep it on one that's fine but if you want to create another profile you just click on new profile and then it's going to give you that little welcome button that i deleted in the very beginning and you can delete it on this one too. But for profiles, if you go to edit profile, you'll be able to select an application that you're gonna want for that particular profile. And you can make that your default profile and you can obviously have a different one for the other ones. Now, if you're wanting to rename them so that way you know which ones are which, you just right click and go to rename and rename it however you want. I'll be going into this in more detail in its own separate video, but that's a quick rundown for it. Now for the generals, this is where you're going to want to make sure that you are up to date on the current version. So as of right now, this is the current version because I just downloaded this today for the video, which is the 5.2.1 point blah. <laughs> you can give it its own device name. You can have it to where it never goes to sleep. You can change the brightness of the tiles. And then obviously when you have it plugged in, it'll tell you which firmware version you have. Since I don't have it plugged in, it's not going to tell me for your accounts. This is going to be where you can add in like your YouTube, your Twitch, your Streamlabs, and so on and so forth. I'll go into this in more detail in its own separate video as well. So on the on here, there's more than you can do than just having what we got five here. So five, 10, 15 tiles. Now, depending on which one you have, if you have the mini, if you have the regular, if you have the XL, you're going to have different amount of tiles. What's really nice though, is you can create so many different amounts of tiles and everything through folders. So if I wanted to have just this one tile being 
just one thing, like let's say I wanted it to be just for my streaming, I can create a folder and then I can name it like stream. And then if I open it by double clicking, it's then gonna give me more. So then I can put all the stuff I want in here and then I can create more folders and it just keeps on going. Obviously you're gonna have this back to return and everything like that. So you have to, you know, click to get to the next ones and everything like that to get back to where you want to. But as you can see, you have 15 tiles to start with, but you can build folders inside of each one of those tiles, which is really nice. And it gives you so much more flexibility, even if you only had the mini. So if you had the mini and you only had six tiles, you still have quite a bit to work with to be able to create as many folders that you want to and everything like that. So down here on pages, you can also create additional pages and it just keeps going and going and you just keep getting the same amount. Now it's going to take out one of those tiles so you can go back to the other pages and then it's gonna do the same here where it's gonna now take out two tiles. So you started off with 15, then you go down to 14, now you're down to 13 because you got these to move around. But I mean, that's still endless amounts that you can customize and create what you want to create for that workspace that you want. Up here on the top right where it's got like the RGB looks like a keyboard, but it's actually a stream deck with a bunch of squares. This is going to be the store. This right here is by far the coolest thing ever that they have added to the stream deck. When I first got my stream deck, this was not even a thing and it gives you so much flexibility with your, with your actual device. So the discover is really nice. It kind of gives you an idea of what's been new and added. And they do like these little monthly roundups and stuff like that. And then if there's new product that comes out, they go and share that product information on here, like the stream deck pedal and stuff like that, or the key light mini. And there's just a lot of stuff to kind of go through and absorb and see if you want to add it to your actual stream or to your device. The plugins is where a lot of the meat is with the actual store. So you got so much stuff to work with between audio and developer tools. You got engagement stuff. So like you can add in, you know, stuff from like your Twitch tools and you can add stuff for like finances if you want to use it for finances. You got things for gaming. So if you wanted to have like stream deck games or dice or memory games or Minecraft stats. So like there's so much different stuff that you can add on here. And I'll go through this in another video. This video alone, just the store, is probably gonna be one of the longest videos in the actual playlist because I'm gonna wanna go through a lot of these things on here and kind of talk about it. I mean, you got icons and these icons are what's going to be able to be downloaded and added to your Stream Deck icons. So like you can have these to be very um, flushed out and they're pretty sharp images based on, you know, having just the basic ones that Elgato gives because Elgato gives some pretty like mediocre ones in my opinion, but they work. They're not the best looking ones, but like if you do Photoshop, you got all these little Photoshop ones. You get 70 icons for free installed. That way it makes it easier for your workflow. For music, they have it to where you can do music or sound effects. These are all DMCA free. You don't even have to worry about getting any copyright strikes or anything, but you can add these and make a soundboard onto your actual stream deck, or you can add it to like one of your multifunctions. So like maybe you're doing a BRB scene or starting soon and you like one of these songs and you want to use one of these songs and you want to add it into your scene and stuff like that through a multifunction. You could do that. Sound effects, perfect for a soundboard. And you have all these different types of categories that you can go through. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff with the store. I absolutely love the store. I think this is a great feature and they're constantly adding new stuff to it. So this is really cool. Now with this stuff on the side, the sidebar, I think the only thing you wouldn't have probably is voice mod. I think that might be something that has been pulled over from what I use on mine because I use voice mod because I have the uh, the pro version of voice mod so that way I can have uh, all these different types of sounds and voice changing and stuff like that. So I do like voice mod for that. But what's really cool about all of these is 
this is what is going to allow you to create what you want in your tiles for streaming. So I'm not going to go into the details on how to do that in this video. This is just simply navigation. But if you're using, let's say, OBS Studio, you have a scene. You just quickly drag it over and then it's going to ask you for that title. So we can say like starting soon. And I'm actually going to put a enter there because if you look down here, it's going to show you, you want to make sure you can read it. And it's this right here, this little icon window, this is what you're going to see on your stream deck. So as you can see that little background icons that they give again, mediocre looks blah. I don't like it. So, you can use the ones from the store, download those, and make it a little bit more presentable for you. It's up to you. Um, now, if you go and have a certain collection, a certain scene collection, you can then choose from whichever you got there, and then you're going to say which part of the scene it's for. So, if it's for starting soon, you want to make sure that the title and the scene matches. Otherwise, if you hit starting soon and it's sent for like your BRB, and you hit starting soon on accident and you go to BRB instead of starting soon, people are going to be a little confused. So make sure those two are, you know, the same. Uh, the other thing too is you can change the text for it. So if you want it to be more in the center, you can do that. Or if you want it on the top, center is probably better. You can then change the font size for it if you need it to be a little bit bigger. You can put an underline on it. You can even change the font size or the font type too. So it's entirely up to you and how you want that to look and then for this this will let you know if you want it to be like on off type deal depending on how you want to do it and I'm gonna go through all this in another video as well but you can set from a file if you have a file created or if you have a file downloaded you can do it that way you can create a new icon which I'll go into another video where you can actually create your own icons and you can even open up the Stream Deck icon library, which gives you even more stuff to work with. One last thing I do wanna go over though, is if you ever wanted to get rid of any of these things here on the side, just go up here to where it looks like notes with bullet points on the top right. And it's gonna put these little check marks. So if you wanted to get rid of something, you could just hover over it, click the little check marks off. And if you wanted to move things around, you'll take these three lines on the right hand side and just left click and drag once you see that white line, let go, and then it will move it. And then once you're done, just hit done, and it gets rid of the ones you don't want to use. If you want to bring them back, just do this, and then reselect them all, and then bring them back. And that is pretty much it. But guys, if you found this video helpful, be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to take a look at the other playlist of the Elgato information that I did a couple years ago, I'll link that in the video description below as well for you. That way you can go and check it out. But I'm going to be covering a lot more stuff with Elgato Stream Deck to help you guys out. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.